Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Increase performance and clarity while reducing stutters and ghosting. Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we jump into the video, I just have two disclaimers. The first one is everyone's system is different so your results will vary depending upon your PC build. In the second half of the video, I will also be going over some DLSS items, and it will be very important that you have the new and updated version 3.7 DLSS DLL file installed for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you are unsure of how to do that, I've just done a video. Links will be down below in the description, or you can click up here. I would recommend watching that video first, and then come back to this one. In today's video, everything that we're gonna be going over today will revolve around the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. Think of this as an NVIDIA control panel on steroids. You can do much more than you can in the NVIDIA control panel, but you can also cause a lot more problems as well. First, we'll go over the download and installation of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, as well as the ancillary file that we're gonna need to be able to adjust our DLSS settings. We will then go over all of my settings in the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, as well as how to use the application. We will then go over Resizable Bar, what it is, how it can help reduce stutters, as well as possibly increase your FPS. And lastly, we will go over DLSS, how to enable Ultra Quality Mode, as well as how to adjust various magnification or reduction levels for DLSS. We will then go over how to adjust the presets for DLSS and what these presets will do. Now for this portion is why it's very important that you have the updated DLSS DLL file or you will not have access to these new presets. Now please do not get the DLSS DLL file confused with the frame generation file for those of you who are asking about that. The DLSS settings that we're going to go over in this video does not pertain to the frame generation file for all of your 40 series cards. And the only file that you need to update to be able to utilize the new DLSS settings and presets is the DLL file that I have shown in a previous video. Now, if you have any comments or questions throughout today's video, please leave them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, Make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, the first thing we're going to do is go over the download and installation of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. If you have had this downloaded prior to this video, there have been some updates in the Profile Inspector as well as the ancillary software that we're going to install alongside of it so that we can adjust our DLSS settings inside the profile inspector. Now keep in mind all the links for today's video will be down below in the description so be sure to check those out. When you click on the link below it will bring you up on this page. To download the latest version we're going to head over to releases click on latest and that will bring you to the latest version that's available. From here we can click on NVIDIA Profile Inspector zip and download the zip file for that. Now that we have this downloaded, let's go ahead and download the other piece of code that we need to install in this folder. The next link that you need to click on down below in the description is for the Nexus Mods website. This will bring you up on a page with the NV True HDR RTX HDR for all games. If we scroll down on this page, you're going to see a section called Optional Files. This is the NVIDIA Profile Inspector XML file that we need to download to unlock the ability for us to change our HDR as well as our DLSS settings inside the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. So for this, all we need to do is click on the Manual Download and it will download the XML file that we're going to need. Once we're done with that, we can minimize these two pages. Now what we need to do is to go to your download section or wherever you have downloaded these two zip files. We will unzip the NVIDIA Profile Inspector as well as the NVIDIA Profile Inspector XML file. 
Now that you have extracted both of these zip files, what you would want to do is to drag and drop your NVIDIA Profile Inspector folder right on your desktop, which I've done right here. Now, keep in mind, the NVIDIA Profile Inspector is a portable EXE file. So what that means is this is not going to get installed on your PC. You're actually going to be running the application right from the folder itself. So now what we can do is open up the NVIDIA Profile Inspector folder. Now that you have your folder open, you're going to notice that I have one extra file in my folder that you do not see in yours, and that is the custom setting names XML file. This file is going to be the other zip file that we had downloaded prior. So what you would want to do is open up the NVIDIA Profile Inspector XML folder. Inside this folder, you will find the custom setting names XML file. You would then drag that into your NVIDIA Profile Inspector folder so that you will now have four files inside of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. I hope that makes sense, and if you have any questions about this, please let me know. At this point, we can now open the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. To do that, we're just going to double click on the EXE file right here. All right, so if this is your first time opening this application, this may look a little bit daunting, but don't worry, we're going to go over everything in detail. I would also like to preface this by saying I would not change anything in here unless you know what it's going to do. There's always a way to switch back to default, and I will go over all that here in just a moment. Before we go over any settings of this application, let's talk about how to use the application first. At the very top of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector on the left-hand side, will give us a list of profiles in which we can use this application for. Now we can use this as a global profile, meaning that it will get umbrellaed over all of our games, on our PC, or we can choose specific games or simulators by just ticking on the drop down and typing in your game or simulator and then clicking on the appropriate one. If you'd like to get back to your global profile, all you would need to do is to click on the little house button right next door to profiles, and this will take us back to our global driver profile. To the right of that, we have an option to refresh the current profile, and next to that, we'll restore the current profile to all of our defaults. So if you have messed around in here and are not sure what you changed or what the defaults are, then you could just tick on this button and it will switch everything back to default for you. And that's really all the options that we're going to go over here today. There are a couple other ones, but are not really going to be pertinent to what we're going to be going over here today. The last thing I want to go over at the very top is the apply changes button. This is going to be very important that you press this anytime you make changes inside the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. All right, so now let's get into some of the settings in the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. The first thing I'm gonna do is to go back to my profile and I'm gonna type in Microsoft Flight Simulator. When you type in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're gonna get a couple versions that will pop up. The one that you wanna choose is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, like I explained earlier, we are gonna be going over some resizable bar settings as well as DLSS settings. For the time being, I'm gonna skip over these sections while I go over all of my other NVIDIA Profile Inspector settings. At the very top, will give us all of our new HDR settings. Now, I have not tested any of these but if you have, please let me know your results down below in the comments. The second section is our DLSS, so we'll skip over that for now. Below that is compatibility. I do not change anything in this section. The next section is sync and refresh. There's a couple things that I have changed in here, most notably at the very top under the G-Sync applications. Now, I do wanna preface this by saying that if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor, do not change any of these G-Sync options here. On my system, I do not have a G-Sync monitor, so what I did was I went in and turned off all of the G-Sync options. Now, whether this is gonna help with performance or not, I don't know. <laughs> but for me, I like turning anything off that I'm not using, 
I feel that it helps with system latency. So now let's go over how to change or adjust some of these settings. So we'll start with G-Sync first. Again, if you have a G-Sync monitor, do not adjust any of these settings. So to adjust the setting, you will just click on where it says on or off. It will open up a dialog box. To the right, we'll have a drop down. Here you can choose which option you would like to pick. Click on that option and you're all set to go. Again, I went to the next one down, clicked on the drop down, click disallow, disallow, and so on and so forth. Now you'll also notice to the right of the drop down box, we also have another NVIDIA button. This button will restore the value to its default. So if I press on this, watch what happens to the disallow state. It is now reverted back to the default state, which is allow. All right, so now that we have made our changes to our G-Sync, that is about all the changes that we're going to do in the sync and refresh section. You will notice that some of these options down here are in bolden, means that they have been changed from default. All of these settings are actually able to be changed in the NVIDIA control panel directly. So let's skip down to the next section, which is anti-aliasing. And again, you will notice that some of these options are in bolden. And that's only because I've made these changes inside of the NVIDIA control panel. We're going to skip down to the next section, which is texture filtering. There's no changes that I've made in here. Next, we're going to drop down to the common section. There's going to be a couple settings that I've changed in here, as well as resizable bar. Again, I'm going to skip over resizable bar for right now, because there's a couple things I need to go over with that first. The first thing that we're going to adjust in the common section is the ANSEL enabled. And this is going to have to deal with multi-plane or multi-pane overlay. This is not something that is used for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I would recommend to turn this off. So to adjust this, we'll take on the drop down, turn it off. The next setting that we're going to adjust is our CUDA Force P2 state. This is going to be a power saving state. We're going to go ahead and turn that off as well. So again, tick on the drop down and turn that off. Now that's pretty much all I'm going to adjust in the common section until we get to the rebar options. So let's scroll down a little bit more. All right, so now we're going to scroll all the way down to the other section. The first option that we're going to adjust here is the ANSEL flags for enabled applications. We are going to turn that to disabled or disallowed. Yours might already say disallowed, and that's okay. Next, we're going to scroll down a little bit more until we get to memory allocation policy. As default, this will be set up as memory allocation policy is needed. I prefer to set this as memory allocation policy moderate pre-allocation. This will set aside some memory specifically for the SIM to help reduce any stutters if for some reason it requires a significant amount of memory whether it be loading in scenery or something like that. Underneath of that, we have NVIDIA predefined ANSEL usage. And again, we're going to turn this to disallowed by ticking on the drop down and down to disallowed. OK, so those are all of my changes that I've done in the NVIDIA profile inspector minus the rebar and DLSS. So what we need to do now to make everything take effect is to hit the apply changes at the very top. And now everything will be locked in stone so when we boot up Microsoft Flight Simulator, all of these setting changes will now take effect. All right, so now let's move into resizable bar and what is resizable bar and what can you expect by enabling this on your system? Well, for one, resizable bar has been tested by Linus Tech Tips for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in his testing, he did notice a 5% increase in FPS. Now, 5%, if you look at it over the big scope of things, is really not that much, maybe only one or two frames per second. But what Resizable Bar will do is allow an untethered communication between your CPU and your GPU. What is Resizable Bar? Resizable Bar is an optional PCIe Express interface technology. As you move through the world in a game, GPU memory or VRAM constantly transfers textures, shaders, and geometry via many small CPU 
and GPU transfers. Using resizable bar, assets can instead be requested as needed and sent in full, so the CPU can efficiently access the entire frame buffer. And if multiple requests are made, transfers can occur concurrently rather than queuing. So the next question everybody will have is, well, can I use resizable bar on my system? What CPUs and platforms support resizable bar? Here is a list of the desktop CPU and chipset support. Again, links for this will all be down in the description. If your system meets these specs, then you will have the ability to enable resizable bar as far as a hardware standpoint. There are some software updates that you may also need to do to get resizable bar working. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. So now what GPUs can take advantage of resizable bar? Any RTX 30 series graphics card and above will be able to utilize resizable bar. Now if we scroll down a little bit more, we will see a list of games that are supporting resizable bar. Now of course this is a little bit old from 2021, but I'm going to show you how we can force resizable bar on on any game using the Nvidia Profile Inspector. Below we have some vBIOS update information and this talks about what cards may or may not need to have their vBIOS updated. I would not recommend for anybody to update your vBIOS on your GPU unless you know exactly what you're doing. You can brick your GPU very quickly by updating the incorrect vBIOS on that chipset. While we're on this page, there are a couple installation steps for resizable bar. First, you have to confirm you have a compatible CPU and CPU chipset. You need to confirm you have a compatible motherboard. Next, you're going to update your motherboard sBIOS if it's required. This is going to be done by installing an update from the manufacturer of the motherboard only. Then enable resizable bar support in your motherboard's BIOS interface. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to go over a couple various motherboards and how to activate or enable resizable bar in each of those motherboards. If you do not have the option to enable resizable bar, then you may need to update the BIOS on the motherboard itself. This is all going to be specific depending on the manufacturer of that motherboard. So therefore, I would recommend to go to the manufacturer's website to get the appropriate firmware and also the installation steps for your motherboard. Next, we're going to update to the latest GeForce Game Ready Driver or Studio Driver will work as well. And like it says here, if you have a GeForce RTX 3060, you're good to go. If you have a TI, a 3070, a 38, or 3090, you may require a vBIOS update. But again, remember what I said earlier about updating your vBIOS. If you have a Founders Edition graphics card from NVIDIA, get your vBIOS update tooled directly from the NVIDIA website. If you have a custom partner card, then get the update tool from their site. But again, if you're not familiar with doing this, I would highly urge you to not even learn on your graphics card. Lastly, we're going to verify resizable bar is enabled in the NVIDIA control panel, which I will go over here in just a moment. So now that we have gone over some of these steps, Let's go over the individual motherboards and how to enable resizable bar in the BIOS. The first motherboard that we're going to be taking a look at is ASUS. Again, links for all of these will be down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. As you will see, for enabling resizable bar in this BIOS, it's as simple as clicking on Easy Mode and then clicking on Resizable Bar. Click Save and Reset. Now, when you enable resizable bar, this will actually do two things in your BIOS. One, it will enable above 4G decoding, and it will also activate resizable bar support. Yours may say auto or might just say on. Now, there is one last thing that you may need to do in your BIOS. If for some reason you are not seeing that resizable bar is enabled, and again, we'll go over this in the NVIDIA control panel in a moment, 
then you may need to make one more adjustment. In your BIOS, under the Boot section, you want to make sure that your Launch CSM is disabled. Now, keep in mind that if you have done all of this in your BIOS and have activated Resizable Bar and it still is not showing up in the NVIDIA Control Panel or on GPU-Z, which I show here above, then you may need to update your vBIOS to be able to utilize rebar. If you do not know what you're doing there, do not update your vBIOS because if you do it wrong, you could have a $1,000 to $2,000 brick. All right, so the next motherboard we're going to take a look at is MSI. To enable resizable bar on an MSI BIOS, you would need to go to the Budin UEFI BIOS page and then select Enable Resizable Bar Support shown here below. Once you're done, you can hit the F10 key to save your changes and then reboot the system. And again, this will also activate above 4G decoding as well as resizable bar. Below will give you some more information about how to confirm that it is active. And then below that is information about updating your graphics vBIOS. I can't stress this enough and you're not gonna hear me say it enough, but if you do not know what you're doing when you are updating a vBIOS on your graphics card, then just do not do it. The last manufacturer of motherboard that we're gonna go over today is Gigabyte. Now if we scroll down here on the Gigabyte page, this will explain how to update some vBIOS information. Again, if you don't know how to do this, please don't. Below that will give you some CPU support for resizable bar, motherboards that support resizable bar, and below this, we'll explain how to update your motherboard BIOS to be able to enable resizable bar if you do not see that option in your BIOS section. Below this, we'll give some motherboard BIOS settings. And again, we will be turning on or enabling above 4G decoding, as well as turning on or auto resizable bar support. Below this, we may also need to turn off or disable your CSM support. This will also be located in your boot menu. All right, so now that you have enabled resizable bar in your BIOS, we can now load back into Windows and open up the NVIDIA control panel to verify that resizable bar is active. Okay, we now have the NVIDIA control panel open. Oh, and by the way, if you would like to know all of my settings that I use for the NVIDIA control panel, I've done a video on that just recently. I'll post a link down below for all of my settings here, or you can click up here. Once you have the NVIDIA control panel open, we're gonna go down to where it says system information on the left-hand side, give that a left click. Once this opens, you will see a section that says resizable bar over on the details section. If yours says yes, then that means that resizable bar has been activated inside of your BIOS and is available for use. That does not mean that it is enabled in any of your games or simulators. So do not get confused by this. So now that we know that Resizable Bar has been activated and we are ready to go, we can close out the NVIDIA control panel. And now we can open the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, make sure that you're on the correct profile at the top, and now we can force on rebar settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now to do this, we're gonna go all the way down to the common section, which is number five on the left-hand side. And we have three different settings that we have to adjust to enable resizable bar. The first one is resizable bar feature. We're gonna tick on the dropdown and click enabled. The second one is resizable bar options we're going to select the only one available, which is 001. And lastly, the resizable bar size limit, we're gonna tick on the dropdown and select the option that says 04 or Red Dead Redemption. Once you have those three options selected, we can then go up to the top, hit Apply Changes. All right, so now let's move into section two, which is DLSS. Now, like I said earlier, it's gonna be very important that you have updated your DLSS DLL file to version 3.7 to be able to use these updated features 
inside of the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. And that's because the XML file that we had input into the NVIDIA Profile Inspector has been matched or updated to the version 3.7 DLL file. So everything is syncing up together. Hey, if you'd like to help out the channel further, go down below and tap on the thanks icon. Your support is greatly appreciated. So now let's take a look at the options that we have available inside of the DLSS section. The first option is to force all quality levels to DLAA. Now, this is really only going to be used for games or simulators that you want to use DLAA option, but do not have it available on that game or simulator. So let's say you're playing Half-Life Alex and it does not have a DLAA option and it only has DLSS quality. Now, I'm not saying that's for sure. I'm just giving this as an example. What you can do here is go in and turn this to on. And what that will do now is make all of your DLSS levels force into DLAA mode. So I hope that makes sense. If you have questions on that, let me know down below in the comments. But for Microsoft Flight Simulator, we have a DLSS DLAA option. So for Microsoft Flight Sim, we're gonna leave this off. The next option that we have below is to force a DLSS preset. So now what are presets? While the default DLSS network settings provide state-of-the-art image quality, you can choose from a variety of other presets. These presets listed below adjust how DLSS handles different scaling ratios and game content. So as you see here below, we have preset A, B, C, D, E, and F. The new preset that we have available to us now is preset E. Presets offer you the ability to fine tune different input resolutions and will remain as OTA updates occur. DLSS defaults to preset D for performance, balanced, and quality modes, and preset F is default for ultra performance and DLAA modes. You can override any of these presets by selecting any one above. All right, so I hope that gave a little bit of insight on what these presets will actually do and allow you to understand that these are pre-configured presets that you can adjust for individual games. And that's because you may have various results depending on the games or simulators that you're using. Now, personally, I have tried preset E, which is the newest preset that we have available. And I must say that the clarity is amazing. The ghosting has gone down to almost nothing. I still see a little bit of ghosting, but the screens on my avionics are much, much clearer. Below our presets, we also have the ability to force a scaling ratio. Now, this is what we're going to use to enable ultra quality in DLSS. So before you get too carried away here, let me go over who this may be good for and who maybe should not use this. So first, let's talk about monitor users. If you're on monitor and you're using your native resolution and you're also using DLSS quality and find that your performance is great, you have good performance, you have low VRAM usage, you just want to get more clarity on your panels or way out in the distance and quality just doesn't cut it for you. Then what you can do is to come in here and you can select any of these other scaling ratios. So for ultra quality, we can set 0 0.77, 0 0.80, but just keep in mind that the DLSS quality mode is going to render at 0.66666 native resolution. You can go up from there all the way up to 0.999, and it will also tell you down here for games that do not support DLAA, or if you try to use DLAA, it breaks with that game, 
then you can use this native resolution for that. So now, like I said earlier, if you're a monitor, you have great FPS, you have a, a good amount of overhead, then yeah, you can come in here and turn up the quality level for your DLSS. Now keep in mind that this is a forced scaling ratio. So for performance, balanced, and quality, as well as ultra quality, this setting will override all of them. Meaning if you set this for 0 0.80, no matter what you set in the sim, whether it be balanced or performance, it will still render at 0 0.80. So now let's go on the flip side of that. And now let's say you are a VR user. Now I'm coming from the Pimax Crystal, so I'm going to give you my experience with that. For the Pimax Crystal in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I am using the quality mode for DLSS. That means I'm rendering at 0.666 native resolution. I am also downscaling my resolution in the OpenXR toolkit to 3900. Now, because I have done that, there would be no point for me to actually increase my render resolution in here because I'm not actually rendering at the full resolution of the headset in the first place. Now, if I were to be running my native resolution at 4312, and I still had some overhead, then yes, this would be a great option to come in here and increase my render resolution so I can get an even clearer image. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, wait a minute. I've heard from other YouTubers that we need this DLSS tweaks tool to be able to enable different presets or to change scaling ratios. And I'm here to say that you do not need to go through all of that work just to change your scaling ratios or change your presets for the DLSS. It can all be done inside the NVIDIA profile inspector. And I've just proven that to you here. Lastly, once you have all of these set, you want to make sure that you hit apply changes at the top. And folks, that's it for today. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know down below in the comments section. And also, if you have made these changes on your system, please let me know how they're working out for you, as well as posting your system specs. I'm sure this will help out other people. Thanks everybody for watching today's video. And if you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button to all my flight simmer friends around the world. Keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.